The Legacy Experience has been brought to you in part by Sage, Cortland, Islander Precision Fly Reels, Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line. On this episode, I'll be covering saltwater fly fishing for salmon strategies to locate preferred bait passageways and salmon holding areas through the use of visual topography when searching new fly water in rivers inland British Columbia on today's show. What I'm looking for primarily are called bait passageways or bait holding areas that can hold concentrations of bait. Without the bait, you simply cannot find the salmon and especially coho, they're voracious feeders. In this area, we've got what looks like a sheer cliff face, but actually when you might not pick it up on your electronics 100 feet out, but as you move and, and do your exploratory work, visual indicators are, I'm noticing kelp on the inside, I can visually, through the use of a ground glass lens, see dark areas and light. So there's a beautiful light shoal here. There's no more, it comes up to maybe 15 feet, I'm seeing a little bit of bait busting on the surface. And what I mean by a passageway, we go through a dark area to my right, there's also a kelp island. So when I look at the topography of this area, I've got a perfect bait passageway where it will hold bait and also where coho can predate on these needlefish, anchovies or herring. Once I've found the bait and I found my key indicators of bait, salmon, underwater reefs, kelp, I've got all of my elements. I've got to make a decision. Am I going to be casting on the move, on a wind drift, or am I going to be anchoring? My anchoring choices are a traditional anchor or I can simply take some rope from the bow or stern and tie up to the kelp as it's rooted to the ocean floor. I think my choice today, because the wind isn't too bad, I'm going to actually just wind drift through these bait passageways trying to locate the first salmon of the day. And I can see the bait busting on the surface so I know there are some fish here. With wind drifting, the whole point of saltwater fly fishing is making sure that that fly presentation is in the zone, in the fly zone, as long as possible. And that's the beauty of wind drifting as opposed to anchoring. Anchoring will determine how that fly will be presented. When you've got the luxury of wind drifting, you can present that fly in many different angles, both inshore, side to side, or a little bit offshore. Okay, here we go. There's a fish right behind me. Let's see if we can get him. Okay. There you are. Come on now. That's the beauty of wide arbor reels. Fast pickup, or these fish will be all over you. Yeah, they got a little bit of power. Oh yeah, my green clouser did it. That's the hot one. Saltwater fly fishing, a very rewarding hobby. When all the elements line up together, there is nothing like it. Just the perfect essence of a salmon, dark back, chrome underside, perfect fins, well-defined lateral line. 
and a love of flies. You know, DFO has a massive responsibility in ensuring that these coho salmon and king salmon are in the Pacific for years to come. So any pollution from industry out in the rivers, any potential spills into the ocean ruins the habitat of these salmon. We've already lost 600 salmon streams on the south coast, which is considered to be the, the lower mainland through industry, urbanization, and habitat destruction. Oh, you were that way. the beauties is these Cortland 325 grains is the 24 foot head then your yellow running line as far as casting it relatively simple you just want to get that head out as much as you can one haul two haul get the 24 foot head to the tip cast at 11 o'clock and, and you'll be casting out that whole line the strip on saltwater fly fishing the, there's different variations to it some people like to move that bait fast some extremely slow. Mess around with some different retrieves and find what you have confidence in. I'm just seeing these fish bust all around. There is nothing like getting a chrome bright salmon on a cast fly. Just the feel of his lips biting down on that fly and you've got to set that hook into him, it's unreal. So inshore, make sure you find those key holding areas, even on sheer cliffs like we're fishing today. There's always those reefs that come up, the sand floors where the light penetrates much, very much like finding a stillwater shoal for rainbows, they exist inshore on the Pacific too. An eight weight fly rod, and it truly is one of the most magical experiences in 17 years I've had as salt fly. As you can see, this type of gear is what these salmon should be landed on. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful, beautiful fish. Magic power. Went from the pink fly as an exploratory fly, the original deceiver, and then to a green a bright green clouser, which is eventually is what these fish wanted. Oh my goodness. There he is. Beautiful princess salmon on the fly. Gorgeous. Johanna and Mick, two of the owners of Legacy Lodge, um, I am having a great time here and this saltwater fly fishing is absolutely unbelievable. Uh, I know you guys are five star, everything about Legacy Lodge, coming in here, the beautiful bay that you land in the Grumman Goose, incredible. Tell me a little bit what you guys consider the Legacy Lodge experience. You know, I've spent a lot of time going up and down the coast, I've been to a lot of lodges and uh, I knew some of the things that I wanted. So when I found Rivers Inlet, which is the first place I really fell in love with, um, 
it gave me uh, the calm water, first of all. Uh, I wanted to provide uh, boats that were uh, a little more uh, adapted to this area. You guys have owned Legacy Lodge for how long now? Ten years. It's our ninth full season with guests, and uh, we had one friends and family season before that. So it's actually our tenth year. So, uh, as I say, the fishing here is unbelievable. The experience is five star. Uh, tell me a little bit about what viewers can expect. They come in on a Grum and Goose, five day trips, four day trips. How does it work? Our planes fly on Thursday and Sunday, so you'd either come in uh, on Thursday and leave on Sunday, or you come in on Sunday and leave on Thursday. You guys had a dream to build a lodge, and we're looking at it behind us. This is Legacy Lodge, five star. You know, it's much more than just the fishing. The fishing is <laughs> exceptional, but it's a the, real uh, people business. Right. It sure is. It sure is. Uh, and the people love uh, being around the whales every day, like you've experienced the last couple of days. And it's just, it just seems like every aspect of uh, the things that we loved uh, was here. And we wanted to share that. And you handpicked this location. We did. There was nothing here. No. There was just this beautiful bay, and you had the vision. Correct, correct. And we really wanted to uh, share that with, uh, with people. That's why we keep it small. Uh, you know, our trip sizes are only 20. Uh, we could easily expand that, and we just, we're not going to do that. Um, we enjoy that size, and it feels like a family. Uh, most of our groups uh, really bond while they're here. They create friendships that, you know, have lasted. Last, right. People yeah. come back on the same trip every year. I appreciate you having me up, and thank you for getting me into this phenomenal saltwater fly fishing. Okay. You're thank welcome. You. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, sure. Johanna. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Let's get back to more of that saltwater fly fishing in Rivers Inlet. I'll show you how we do the front cast and the back cast. Let's start with the back cast. We're in a perfect position against the shoreline. We've got all of our fly line out. As you can see in this fly line here, you go from the yellow of the Cortland 325 grain to the 24 foot head. So you've got your beautiful fly out there, and a nice nine foot tapered leader. Now what you want to do is get just about the 24 foot head out, utilizing the water to build your cast, to build the hull. We're not even hauling yet, just hauling against the ocean itself. So single haul is this, then you're pushing. Got that one on my foot. So you haul off the ocean, push, push. Let it go at 11 o'clock. And that should clear your whole fly line. So that's the front cast. On the back cast, which is one of my favorites. And the also great thing about this is the boats you're fishing in. Center consoles, lots of room, nothing to catch your fly line on. And a great fly line because it's going to make your day on the water that much more enjoyable. So again, we bring the 24 foot head through and we're going to do our back cast. So same thing on the back cast. Haul, haul, and, and back. Oh yeah, nice fish. Nice fish. It's funny how you hook them and they truly don't know what's going on until they get close to the boat and then they just do their Incredible run. This one's a little bit smaller, but on a fly, it's all good. And as you can see, Legacy Lodge, when we arrived, it's in its own lagoon. And I've never seen a lodge like that. As you can see how beautiful this place is, Legacy Lodge, Rivers Inlet. This is Fitzhugh Sound. Try to tail them. You can give them a belly rub and they're quite calm, but the minute you grab that tail, there we go. It's truly one of the fisheries where it takes all your concentration to land one of these because on the light gear, it, they just run for miles. Cortland 325 grain. 
and the 225 grain Cortland Professional Series are two of the nicest fly lines I've ever used for saltwater fly fishing, whether you're offshore or inshore. Oh my goodness, I think you see what I mean. The way, look at this. That's the way they react to the fly. It's more of an annoyance. No two fish battles the same. That is three massive air jumps. And it's funny, on mooching, I don't see the same behavior in these fish. I mean, these fish have got to have attitude to make it the sometimes thousands of miles that they travel. Okay, four jumps. Goodness gracious. He doesn't know I'm going to let him go. Just see that green clouser. You wore me out. Look at that amazing fish. On the clouser, there's a suffix, anywhere from 12 to 15 pound tippet. Five beautiful jumps. Just seems with the fly, there's a certain vitality to this species that I don't know if it's because it's light gear, they know they can get away with more. You know, they're just not subdued until, until the last possible minute. Man, oh man, that fish is a good solid eight, nine pounds. Okay. Look at that healthy downturned eye, very healthy fish. You just don't see the damage to the fish with this type of gear either. Now I'll just reach down and release that fly. But you watched, that fish has been played, put me through a match, what, five, six jumps, some to seven feet? And look, look at him. There he goes. Single barbless, smash this fly. Look at that, a bit of flash tail, typical clouser. This one's a goner. On that 12 pound suffix fluorocarbon to a nine foot tapered leader. This is the white over green with the flash tail. Just a small little gamma gatsu. Stainless steel hook. You can see how strong it is. Just very small barbell eyes. Just to give it some weight. And I've, I've tied in the monofilament loop that I can just should I, should I wish to put in a small Gamagatsu stinger hook back there when the fish are short biting? There he is. That's where I like to get him to the reel as soon as you can. See, normally he doesn't know he's hooked, but watch what's gonna happen here. He's gonna see the boat. There he goes. Unbelievable, man, you are a treat. As you can see, even in the six pound class, these are missiles. Don't let this fish fool you either. He's, he's not even close. Nice seven pound, ocean bright coho, healthy downturned eye, green clouser in his lips. There you go. One more turn, there we go. Maybe I'll give you one quick belly lift. There you are, and down. And I'm just gonna pop this hook. There you go, see you buddy. I hope you've enjoyed today's program on saltwater fly fishing inshore techniques. I've spent about the last 17 years traveling all of the West Coast, and I can tell you meeting some of the most incredible people, characters, and fishing on some of, I would say, the most revered salt waters and areas and rivers, inlet, and legacy lodge 
proves that these areas still exist. With a little bit of exploration and adventure, you can also come out and try this saltwater fly fishing for salmon. I hope you've enjoyed today's program on Rivers Inlet saltwater fly fishing for salmon at Legacy Lodge in Fitzhugh Sound. After 19 years of chasing chrome bright salmon on the fly, I would have to rate Rivers Inlet and Fitzhugh Sound area as one of my top location picks for wild salmon on the fly due to the amount of kelp, bait, leading points, and intact wild river system watersheds. The Legacy Experience has been brought to you in part by Sage, Cortland, Islander Precision Fly Reels, Suffix, the world's most hardcore fishing line.